Hello my friends, my name is Laserjet and welcome back to Train Sim World 4. And today we're back on the training center route. I actually do quite like this route. It's a good uh it's a good route for uh for testing out trains and doing speed tests and stuff. Now if you're wondering why it's quite, you know, breezy in here, uh, I've got the window open and I also have my fan on. Very good reason for this. Uh turns out I'm still having uh computer issues, even though I did spend over one thousand pounds on computer parts uh trying to fix fix it because I bought new RAM, I bought a new power supply, I even bought a better graphics card and all of these new parts still haven't solved the problem. So there is one more thing that I'm missing and that's a new uh, cooling system for my processor. And I actually have my computer on my side. I'll actually take a picture and show you what my computer looks like right now. So thanks to my dad, uh, he ordered me a new uh, cooling system for my processor and it has arrived today and uh, when he's free, he's going to fit it in for me. You know, because I have no idea how how to fit a processor cooling system. So, you know, big thank you to my dad for helping me out uh, through my computer troubles. But today in Train Sim World, uh, I'm going to be taking a closer look at some high-speed electric trains from around the world. So if you're new to the LazyJet YouTube channel, why not consider subscribing, turn the bell notification on as well, so stay notified to the channel, it's just a click of a button. Right then, let's play Train Sim. <laughs> Right, so let's spawn down some high-speed electric trains. Now, some of you have been asking me, how do you spawn down a train? And to do this, uh, if you're on PC, like me, uh, you press tab, and then you get this little uh, thing that should pop up. I don't know how to do it in Xbox or PlayStation. I only know how to do it in PC. So if you have Train Sim World on Xbox or PlayStation, I don't know how, because I don't, I don't use... Uh, consoles. So if we click on spawn a new train and then if we uh, what should be the first electric high speed train? I think we all should go something big, fast and probably something American. So maybe the Acela, if I can spell that right. Yep, I think so. Aha, there we go. Ooh. And uh, because I've got like, you know, I've got my new graphics card, I've got all my settings uh was it general settings no uh advanced settings i've got everything maxed out everything's on ultra everything is is all tiggity boom except for my cooling system which needs to be replaced so here representing america we have the uh, seller express oh oh it's beeping why is it beeping shouldn't be beeping oh no the beeping's back i think it's because the american locos hate me i don't I don't know why all these uh, American locos keep beeping. Um, cab activation. Turn the light on. Have a sit down. Ah, that stopped at the beeping. Good. Shut the door. Jump off. Excellent. Now, the next high-speed electric train, I think, should be from Germany. Now, remembering which uh, train it is, I think it's this one. Let me just spawn it down. Is it the right one? The ICE-3. Yes, it is. Right, so far we've got the Amtrak Acela Express representing America and we have the ICE-3 uh, representing Germany. And it doesn't just stop there because we actually have something from the French family. Now, annoyingly, uh, it won't let me spawn it uh, with these guys, so I'm going to have to spawn it over here, which is, you guessed it, the TGV. And the buffer is in the way. Oh, and there's a post in the way. There we go. The TGV. And then last and certainly not least, if we go uh, to the Great Britain uh, side, we have, obviously, there's only one train I can think of, and it's this. Wait for it to spawn in. There we go. Uh, oh, the... Sun is not in the right place, but there you go. Uh, the Azuma Class 801. So we've got Great Britain and France, the United States and Germany. It's actually quite a good collection of uh, high-speed electric trains, if you ask me. But the question is, which one is better? 
Now we can't judge them on speed because we are on the training center. If I try and max out the speed, they will derail. So we can't judge which one is the best by speed. We have to judge them on looks and uh, sound effects and just the quality of the interior. I think that's a very fair way of, uh, of judging. So I think we should start with Team Germany. So let's see if we try and open the door. Oh, there it is. Oh, very nice. I like the little uh, step that extends. And then we'll see if we try and shut the door. Uh, how do you shut the door? Oh, there we go. Oh, beep, beep. Does the uh, door close? Oh, nice. There we go. Safety beep. I like that. Good. I do like the shape of the window. It looks like something from a from like a Boeing or an Airbus um, airliner, like a, like a plane or something. Let's have a look inside. You got, I think this is like first class. I don't know what that says. Um, quiet zone. Oh, there we go. So close the little door. Oh, and I love the leather seat. So if we have a quick sit down. Ooh, this is nice. I actually quite like the leather seats. That's actually very high quality. I like that. Um, oh, I like these ones as well. Do the um, do these ones move? No, they, they these chairs don't move. But I like these ones because I think I think they move in real life or are they fixed. I don't know. But if you look. It's slightly placed in an angle. Very good reason for this because uh, at the nose of the uh, the ICE-3, it gets a lot more narrower. So because of that, uh, the seats need to be slightly in an angle uh, so everyone can fit. I'm assuming anyway. I mean, I'm no expert. And it's actually quite cool that if you're a passenger, you can actually see everything what the driver's doing. I mean, you don't, you don't get that in British trains, but uh, that's actually really nice. I, like, I love the... Uh, that. I like how uh, brave the Germans are. Like, you know, if you make a mistake, uh, everyone will see you. So it's very crucial that you get everything right. So let's have a quick look in the uh, in the driver's bit. Ooh, this looks very nice. Very modern. I like this. I don't know what any of these buttons or switches do, but it is, it is very clean and very nice in here. It does feel very snug. And then let's have a look through the, uh, well, the, not the cabin, but the, the coach. There we go. Um... Ooh, this looks nice. I mean, these seats are actually facing a different direction to those seats. That's actually quite interesting. <gasps> and there's a coffee table. <gasps> oh, I love a, I love a coffee table. If, if there's a coach that has a coffee table, that's like an immediate win for me. But this looks very nice. Oh, this one's got a bigger coffee table. Oh, it does feel very nice in here, doesn't it? The, uh, the IC3. And just walking along the coach, has it got anything else? Uh, ooh, it's got lovely woodwork. I think these are the... Uh, uh, the toilets, maybe? Uh, oh, my God, you got your own private compartment. Oh, this must be, like, for business class. Ooh, I do like that. I'll close the door. Fantastic. That's that's actually fantastic. Uh, ooh, ooh, more, uh, more to explore. No, I do I do love the uh, the private compartment bits. That's, uh, that's really clever. Right, moving on to the United States of America, the Acela Express. Now, this one is actually quite interesting because if we open the door quickly and then step up... Unlike the ICE-3, where you could just walk from uh, the coaches into the driving bit, for the Acela Express, I don't know if you can do that in real life. I mean, surely you, you must, but in, in Train Sim World, you can't do that, unfortunately, because, like, it's all blocked off and you can't get from the driving bit into the coaches, which is slightly annoying that you can't do that. I mean, I don't know if you can in real life, but, like, you know, I'm, I'm not a big expert on American trains, but let's have a quick look uh, in the driving bit. Uh, ooh, yes. Now, obviously, you can tell this is American. You can tell by the seats and how they all are uh, placed. Oh, there's a little step here. Ooh, I like the little step. We have a quick little sit down. Ooh, this is nice. The The view isn't um, as as open as the uh, as the IC3 because it's just got, like, one big, nice, round window. But the, uh, the Acela Express has got two small sort of rectangular square shaped window so it does it makes seeing out of it not the greatest but it's not it's not it's not bad but looking at the controls i have a rough idea of what every single like knob and lever and switch does but i'm not a massive expert on american trains i'm still learning about them but uh but american trains have one thing they're proud of and it's the sheer size of uh, of their trains i mean look how tall the uh the acela express is compared to the uh to the ic3 i mean american trains they do like their sizes but let's leave the cab and actually have a take a closer look where's the door there it is let's take a closer look at the uh oh, forgot to close the door close the door there we go let's take a closer look inside the uh 
the actual coach. Uh, can I step up? There we go. Looks very nice. Uh, ooh, it's very, it's very spacious in here. Um, because the American trains are a lot more bigger than the European trains, um, there's a lot more space and a lot more wider, which, you know, it does feel uh, a lot bigger than the IC3. The IC3 felt a little bit too cramped, but, uh, but looking at the interior, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's obviously a lot more wider, but I, I'm not sure it looks as nice as the, the IC3, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, oh, look, you've got like a little kitchen area, what, a microwave? I'm assuming that's a microwave. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, oh, there's a sink. I didn't know the uh, Stella Express had sinks. It's got like a little, uh, what's this? Oh, coffee, oh, coffee beware, hot surface. Don't place anything on top. Oh, so it comes with a, uh, its own official warning sticker. Fantastic. But I think if we go down towards the next coach, I think the interior might be slightly different. Oh yeah, this this is like um, like standard class now. See, it's, it's, it's still like, you know, it's still nice, but it's just not as nice as the German ICE-3. But don't get me wrong, it does look cool. It's like the inside of a Boeing 737-800. Or a 700. Or a 600. Or even a 900. I just thought 800 is like a normal standard Boeing 737 size. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a type of aircraft. But moving on to the French high-speed electric train is the TGV. Now, I can start off by saying that the TGV has the similar problem that the uh, Acela Express has. Um, you can't actually walk from the engine to the coaches, which, again, is very annoying, but I don't think you can walk to uh, the coaches in the TGV, because if we actually look back, uh, I don't think there's any uh, corridor uh, bit that detaches, or attaches, sorry, attaches from the uh, locomotive to the coaches, so um, I don't think there is a corridor bit. But if we step up and close the door and actually have a look inside. Now, I actually quite like the inside of this TGV because it looks very close of the inside of uh, the Eurostar. And I'm, not about, I'm not talking about the new Eurostar. I'm talking about the old one. Like, the interior is very similar because, like, you know, the Eurostars, they're like a, like a custom version of a TGV. But never, nevertheless, uh, I do like the... Uh, uh, the style of uh, of the of the inside of the TGV it looks very close to like a Eurostar, but um, but again, it's got all these like switches and knobs and levers and stuff. That I have no idea um, how to control. Like it's got like different setting pentagraphs, which you know I have, again no idea how to control. Like you know I'm I'm more of a steam engine lover rather than an electric train lover. But it is nice to learn about all this stuff. But I do like the red seeds. That is a nice touch, and it's got like a big fuse box, which I've no idea how that works but let's have a look inside the coaches now this is what i'm really excited about with the tgv because it's got double decker coaches now if i th i think we we bought this coach shall we can we open the door there you go uh, door opening and let's step on board there we go oh there we go <laughs> it's a bit, bit bit buggy but if we start with the bottom part of the coach, the the, the lower decker of, of, of the TGV, uh, the interior is lovely. I like how it's got this um, it's like this little corridor dip, but then when you sit down, the uh, it's the chairs are slightly raised a little higher, which I think is really cool. Plenty of storage space to store your baggage. Uh, the seats, um, I'm not too fond of the styling of the seats, and my phone's just going off, <laughs> predictably. Yeah, I don't like the uh, the stripes on the seats it doesn't 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 wow me enough um but if we have a quick sit down i mean i mean it's nice but i just i mean the red carpet looks fantastic but i'm just not a big fan of the stripes on the seats however i might be speaking a bit too soon because if we uh open these doors tgv has a party piece because if we go upstairs the tgv has an upper deck like an Airbus A380. Again, I'm doing a lot of plane reference, but I don't know why. But I do love the top deck because it's got your own official little lamp. And I do love these little tables. But again, I'm not a big fan of the stripes on the seats. It just doesn't wow me enough. I mean, some of you might have a different opinion compared to mine. But like, you know, the seats do look very good, but they do look very block shaped and I, I, I just don't like the, the the style on the striping it's just it's just not my thing but it's really cool that the corridor bit is on the upper deck and not the lower deck so if you wanted to change from coach to coach you have to go to the top deck 
not the lower deck, which I think is actually really cool. And I, and I do love the detail in the staircase. The staircase is wonderful. And also, in my opinion, apart from the Eurostar, I think the TGVs are probably one of the best looking high speed electric trains in the world. And finally, we have the class 801 in the Azuma LNER livery. So let's open up the door and take a step inside and close the door. Lovely. And I've got to say, the detail in this is just phenomenal. I mean, the detail in the seats look amazing. Take a nice little sit down. And the good thing about the uh, Class A101, it has the same sort of feature that the German ICE3 has. If we stand up and walk to this door, we can walk through the entire consist of the train without having to get out from the cab into the coach. Unlike the TGV and the Acela Express. I do like the fact that you can actually walk out of the cab and walk through the corridor of the... Uh, of the whole consist of the train. And I love the LNER interior. The seats look amazing. And I love the striping on the carpet. It looks fantastic and every detail, it's all there. I mean, I'm not being biased to British trains, but like, you know, th I mean, this is slightly newer because it's a Train Sim World 4 DLC and the others I think were like Train Sim World 2 and 3, I think. However, I do have a few little problems with the uh, Class A101. It's not, the best looking high speed electric train in the world i have to be honest i mean don't get me wrong the detail in this engine is phenomenal but just something about the class 801 it doesn't look wow enough for me it doesn't it doesn't shout high speed electric trains i mean yes it looks like a high speed electric train but there's just something about the way it looks that doesn't really excite me i mean if we had like a class 91 or even a class 390 hey now we're getting somewhere, but a class 801 doesn't doesn't scream to me. Doesn't doesn't excite me enough. Now the last test we have is a horn test. We're gonna do a horn test from the inside of the cab and outside. So let's have a little listen. Very good. Now let's have a listen from outside. I have to say, that is probably one of the greatest sounding horns we have in Train Sim World so far. So far, mind you. Now for the TGV. It's a little bit quiet from the inside, but if we go outside. It's not bad. It's not the greatest, but it is certainly not bad. Next, the Acela Express. Again, it's a little bit quiet from the inside, but how does it sound from the outside? Now, the Acela Express has two different horns. It has a quiet one, and it has a loud one. And also, because this is an American train, the bell sounds off automatically. So just press the bell button. And I'll just turn it off. And finally, the sound of the IC3's horn. So let's give it a little test. Not bad. What about from the outside? I wasn't expecting that. So there you go, we've tested all four of these uh, high-speed electric trains. We've tested the cab design and the interior design. Uh, we've checked out the horns and the looks. And me personally, which one do I think is the best out of these four? But the looks, I think, go to the TGV. I mean, I don't know why, but there's something about the TGV that looks more amazing about it. Because I think it's because it's very close to the uh the yellow star the one i like the uh, the older yellow star but i also love the idea of having double decker coaches that's just a really nice touch oh i left that door open and i don't know about you guys but the staircase i think that's what uh, uh that what really made me go ooh, that's interesting because the corridor bit is actually at the top not the bottom i, th I thought it was at the bottom but no i love the fact that it has double decker coaches and just it just looks 
faster, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, in trains in world, the CGV is probably the fastest um, high speed electric train out here, out, out of the four. But it just, I just, there's something about the TGV. It's got that Eurostar feel to it, and the Eurostar is my favourite high speed electric train in the world. So I think out of these four, I think the Eurostar, in my personal opinion, although I don't really have a personal opinion, but it's just my normal opinion, that the TGV out of the four, in my opinion, is the best. It doesn't have the best sounding horn, because that belongs to the uh, class 801, but if that had this, like, if, if, if the TGV had the same horn as the class 801, then it will be amazing. But it doesn't, so look at me, I can't give all the credit to the TGV, can I? But which one out of these four do you guys think is the best? Uh, the ICE3 from Germany, the Amtrak Acela Express from the United States, the TGV from France, or the class 801 from Great Britain? But if there's any high-speed electric trains you want in Train Sim World 4, then let me know in the comment section down below and see what you guys would like to see in Train Sim World. What I would like is the old Eurostar and possibly the Class 91s and definitely the Class 390s. That would be amazing. But that concludes this video for today, my friends. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Make sure you click that subscribe button, turn the bell notification as well so you stay notified to the channel. It's just a click of a button. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.